that's not who you really are. You're trying to fix something that you know is wrong. But I want to give you a new one. You don't have to fix that anymore. You get a new one. I want to clothe you in who you really are, in the truth about what you wear. For I've given you a robe, which is a robe of righteousness. I've given you a sword, which is the sword of the Spirit. I've given you a shield, which is faith. I've given you feet that are shod with the gospel of peace to crush Satan's head and to walk the highway of holiness. This is your armor, which is my armor, says the Lord. Start to see the enemy from my perspective, totally defeated, no rank, no rights, no power, no privileges, no hope, completely destroyed by the blood of Jesus and by his stripes, you were healed. So think like I think, say what I say, do what I do because that's who you really are. Take off the mask, take off that costume. I'll help you take it off and help you take off that costume and put on the truth about who you are, says the Lord. in Psalm 4 verse 6 there are many who say who will show us some good lift up the light of your face upon us O Lord you have put joy in my heart than they have more joy in my heart than they have when the grain and wine abound in peace I will lie down and sleep for you O Lord make me dwell in safety the world is looking around and saying who will show us something good who will show us something good? Well, we will, as we live in the light of God's countenance. We can be that light before the world where we're full of joy and gladness in our hearts, where we're sleeping with peace and an abundance of safety and it overflows from us. And that's stepping into that truth. That's taking off that costume. The world can see a victorious people. We're not living in fear. We're not living in chaos, but we're overflowing with gladness of heart, overflowing with peace and safety. And that's the truth of who we are, a victorious shining light as we live in his presence, as we live before his continents. So God's saying something this morning and he's really consistent with it. He wants us to understand that we, we live in with these masks all the time and he wants us to shed those. He wants us to understand the authority that we have in him. And just by saying his name, is authority enough because he's already conquered everything. So let's go back into praise. Let's raise our hands. Let's shout to Jesus and understand the authority that we have in Christ this morning.
right now. We're going to do some uh, say-so moments. If you do not know what say-so is, you're about to find out. So say-so is when we celebrate everything that God is doing in this house and in our community. And then we're also bringing prayers to him, things that we want to believe for as a body, for each other, for our community, for our world. So this morning, and, and I want to note this, you guys have these on your chairs. The yellow ones are get prayer cards, fill those out. They do not go into a void. We do pray for these things. And we are going to do that with some of them this morning. Amen. You also have some green cards on your chairs. These are where we give praise for the things where God has come through in our lives. And we want to celebrate that this morning. Oh, thank you. <laughs> we want to celebrate that this morning, what God is doing in this community. So I'm going to go through uh, a bunch of praises and a bunch of prayer requests, and we're all going to believe together. But when I go through these praises, I want to celebrate what's happening, okay? Not, oh, good. It's, yes, God, you have come through on this, okay? So the band will help me on this. All right, so the first one here is, it's a testimony, okay? Once upon a time, I was scared to ride my rollerblades for the first time. And then God spoke to me and said, I am giving you courage. And he did it. Praise God for that. <laughs> come on, come on. How many of you need courage today? That to me is an amazing testimony. Somebody needed courage to ride those rollerblades and try that out because you, you know, if you've ever tried it, it's, it's scraped up elbows, knees, face, like the whole bit, it can be scary. But you might need courage this morning. So I, I want to I add that to our list for anybody that needs courage for anything that they're, gonna they're trying to tackle in life. The next testimony. In a time of crossroads, God gave me direction and favor so I could take the next steps and processes so I could do what he called me to do. Praise God. Praise God for his faithfulness that as you take those steps, He's with you, giving you direction. And I know there's a lot of you out there that are trying to take that next step and you need guidance from God. And he's just asking you to move and then he is gonna give you direction. So we're gonna pray over that. Okay, so here's some prayer requests. Please pray that I can find a literary agent for my book. Come on, a book, yeah. All right, we'll believe for that. Pray that I would be kind to my brother and he would be kind to me, and that Jesus would help me in school. All right, we will add that. Please pray for healing for my friend. She is struggling with health problems, and the doctors can't figure out what is going wrong. So we're going to pray for wisdom for these doctors. Pray for my job, for abundant finances for a home, and for peace instead of anxiety and panic attacks. All right, we will do that. Pray for strength, wisdom, and peace. We want to be fully surrendered to the Lord and finally for physical healing. So I know that these prayer requests came from specific individuals in the body here, but it represents what a lot of us are going through in many different aspects of our lives. So we're going to pray together right now. So let's raise our hands up. Jesus, we bring all of this to you this morning. Lord, we praise you for, for the things that you've come through on, the praises that we shared this morning. And Lord, we pray into those praises and we know that, uh, God, you are a faithful God. And we give you these requests, Jesus. And, and we, we went through these requests verbally this morning, Lord, but that was our prayer. Lord, we're believing, we're standing in faith that these are done, Jesus. We're now gonna watch everything happening in front of us. All of these requests answered today, Lord. And uh, we trust in you. We trust in your faithfulness, Lord. And uh, we, we just give everything over to you, Lord. Our praise, our prayers, our lives, Lord. We know you are looking out for the best for us, Lord. And you have wonderful gifts ahead for each of us. Amen. Amen. All right. Now, let's watch... Uh, a video 
This is Cody Vela's story, so join me on screen as we uh, watch his testimony. I'm Cody, and this is my say-so story. My say-so story starts from last year, the end of 2020. Uh, I was getting a new job. We were expecting our third son. Uh, we were looking for new vehicles, which is exciting. Uh, we were also looking to buy a home, and so there was so much of just things that could feel so great until it felt like it wasn't. Um, in April, uh, as I got this new job, I felt all of a sudden this insurmountable uh, just pressure and stress. I think everything hit me. And when I say it hit me, uh, it literally caused me to pass out. Um, and so I ended up getting diagnosed with having an adjustment disorder um, as well as anxiety and panic, uh, panic attacks and panic issues. With that, now feeling so many external things happening, exciting things, but then internally feeling like this isn't right. Something's not right. Did I do the right thing? Did I, did I really hear God on, on feeling this job change? And uh, it was something that sent me, sent me down this kind of whirlwind of, well, why did that happen? But I knew God was doing something in me and kind of unearthing something that I hadn't fully given to him. Uh, what I started to realize that uh, this wasn't just a physical battle that I was going through, but it was very much a spiritual battle. Uh, and it was waging inside of me. And what that was telling me was, is that my foundation wasn't set on Christ. My foundation was built in my own strength and thinking that I'm going to get through this and I'm going to make this happen. And God was allowing and having all of these great things happen, but now inside of me, this turmoil is thinking, well, how will I manage this? What will I do? Will I make enough money for our family? Will I be able to provide for my family? Will I be able to help us if what it happens if something? There's just so many questions that now are taking place in me, and now, now recognizing that, that there's this turmoil and this spiritual battle taking place in myself, there was one solution to overcoming that, and that was resetting my foundation and paving way to God being that cornerstone and God being that main foundation and structure in my life uh, because I obviously couldn't do it anymore at this point. So now we're in this season of uh, now kind of uh, things are starting to feel stable. Things are feeling a little bit more manageable and uh, we can get through it. We had our son, he's doing amazing. We got the car that we needed to fill the van full of all our kids. We got the house that we were looking for and the job's been probably the best job that I've ever had. And I make a little bit more money than I used to. But ultimately, what I realized through all of this is my foundation wasn't firm. It wasn't, uh, it wasn't seam proof. There was cracks in my foundation and that was in me thinking that I can do all things in my own strength, not through Christ who strengthens me. And so if you're in this place of, you feel like you're, you're kind of stuck in this journey and going through and enduring whatever you might be going and enduring through, I would ask yourself and internally, where is your foundation through all of this? Is it, is it stuck on yourself? Is it stuck on thinking that you're going to get yourself up and out of this? Or is it on just the foundation of Christ, Him being your cornerstone? Uh, and you need to find ways to fill those cracks in your faith. And how I did that was I prayed. I listen to worship the same song every single day. I had a scripture written on my phone by my wife. Uh, there was things that I did practically to help me endure through this and know that uh, the circumstances might not change. The stress is going to keep coming. I have three boys. I know that none of that's changing, but I know now that my foundation, so long as it's firm and set on top of Christ as my cornerstone, I can endure anything. Where when you see these things, you realize, man, I'm not the only one dealing with this. Because isn't that the way it goes? You feel like you're the only one struggling with something. Uh, but these videos, these testimonies are, are great from that aspect, showing us that, hey, we're all in this. There's, there's other people struggling with the same things. So, welcome. 
I know I probably should have welcomed everybody a while ago when I was up here, but I'm welcoming you now. If you're visiting with us, uh, we welcome you. Uh, we're happy to have you here. Yeah. My name is Matt Lehman. I'm on the leadership team here at Grand Rapids. And uh, from me to you and our leadership and everybody else, welcome uh, to the Grand Rapids campus of the Point Church. Uh, we're happy to have you here. If you are new with us, we have these Let's Connect cards on the chairs. Uh, and we'd love to have you fill that out. Drop it in the box in the back. We have a gift for you. We want to get to know you and have you get to know us a little bit more. So, so be sure to fill that out. Or you can go to thepointchurch.com slash connect and uh, fill it out there. Okay, let's continue what we would call praise with our tithes and offerings, all right? Yeah. So this morning, I don't have a verse to share with you. I always usually have a, a verse, but it's more of a principle from the New Testament. And the principle goes along with the life of the disciples as they were following Jesus. And the disciples were all rough people. Maybe, maybe some of them were polished a little bit, but um, there were a bunch of rough guys, okay? And Jesus called them in. And what happened was by being around Jesus, the edges got sanded off. They became more like Jesus over time, even if they didn't get what he was doing at first. They started to get it. But just by being around him and spending time with him, things changed in their lives. And things started changing in the community, obviously, because we saw what happened in the New Testament. So really the principle there is, is the time spent with Jesus changes things. And it's a principle carried throughout the Old and New Testament, where when you just do certain things and spend time in them, life changes. So with the disciples, it was spending time with him. So we're called to spend time. The worship team leads us in worship every week. And in Cody's story, he said he spent time in worship. That's what helped bring him back on track. So spending time in worship consistently, spending time in prayer consistently, things change, our lives change. So I bring you tithe and offering. That, you know, that's the whole financial side of things. And it talks about that almost more than anything else in the Bible. So bringing consistency to tithes and offerings, to your giving, you know, just giving, having a, a giving heart, bringing that consistency to your life. If all those other principles bring about change, why would this not bring about change in our life? And that's something where Holly and I follow all those principles, all those things I just took you through. We do all of that and we expect change every single time. And we do see change every single time. So with that said, I want to pray over our tithes and offerings. You can give online. You can give in the box on the in the back. Um, you can give by text. Multiple ways to give. But however you give, let's, let's raise that up to Jesus. I do it with my phone. So that's what I'm going to do. So let's, let's bring it to God. Lord, we give to you this morning because it's one of your principles amongst so many of your principles, Lord. We are doing this this morning. And if it's our first time, Lord, we're doing it joyfully. And if it's our thousandth time, Lord, we're still doing it joyfully because, Lord, we trust what you're going to do with this, how you're going to multiply it, how you're going to change our lives, and how you're going to change the lives of people in this church and the lives of people in the community. So, Lord, take this right now. We give it to you in faith. Multiply it and do what only you can do with it, Jesus. And we give it over to you right now in your name. Amen. Amen. All right. What we're going to do now is uh, we're going to take a small break because the kids have been in with us during worship this morning, and that's been great. So we're going to take a three-minute break. So if you have kids, take them back. If you don't have kids, say hi to somebody that you don't know or somebody you haven't seen in a while and introduce yourself. So take a few minutes, and we're going to come right back, and we're going to hear a great word from Jed. All right?
right, everybody. Hey, if there's anybody out in the foyer, if you guys want to make your way in, let's find our seats. It's good to see you all here today. I'll give you guys a moment to get situated. Let's go. Come on. Let's go. It's going to be a good time. Hey, I want to welcome everyone to our Fall Family Sunday. It was great having the kids in worship today. That's something a little unique that we're doing today across all of our campuses. And uh, I'm, ex- I'm glad that families can worship together and, and do things a little differently. And we're going to have some celebrations after. Uh, there's hot dogs, donuts, cider, candy, pumpkin painting, lots of fun stuff. This is a great opportunity for us as a church just to spend some time together after the meeting, which I think is where life happens. So I encourage you, if you're new here, if you've been around for a while, uh, if you're looking for community, looking for friendship, don't just look for it in the meeting, look for it in the time after meetings, in your lives, in your days. Those are the moments where you're going to find community, find friendship, and I encourage you to pursue that and put yourself in a place where you can experience that. But today, it's Fall Family Day, and tonight is our Trunk or Treat. So that's from 5 to 7 p.m. right here. So if you're looking for a space to bring your kids uh, to uh, do some trick-or-treating, come on out. We're going to have a fun time tonight as well. So I'd love to see you there. It's going to be a great night. But I want to welcome everyone here today. I want to welcome everyone watching online this morning. And uh, we're excited to get in the Word. Are you guys ready to get in the Word together? Can you guys open up your Bibles to Colossians chapter 3? That's what we're going to spend the majority of our time today. Colossians chapter 3, it's one of the New Testament letters. Uh, I don't know what acronym you use to get there. I use go eat popcorn. Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians. It's the last one of that group there. But we're going to look at Colossians chapter 3. We're going to read verses 1 through 17. Verses 1 through 17. And I want to give you guys some context here real quick. So Paul's writing to this church, the church, the Colossians church. And uh, what he's, he's speaking around a few specific topics intentionally because what's happening uh, in, in, in this city, in this region right now is there are false teachers starting to pop up and there's cults starting to pop up. And, uh, and people are uh, forming and deceiving new believers. People who are new to the faith are getting picked off and they're, and they're pulling them away from this idea of the supremacy of Christ. And, and I think that's a really important topic to, to note. And, uh, and Paul's reminding the church not to fall astray, not to be led astray and turn aside to some of these teachings, um, these empty philosophies this humanism, this secularism, these, these worldly ideas that are infiltrating the church. And so Paul's addressing some of this stuff and the teaching that you find here is, is really powerful teaching. And I think it's really a perfect time to be looking at some of this stuff right now, especially with what's happening in our society is it feels like there's this greater tension as, as worldly ideas are being promoted and pushed so much more strongly probably than they have in recent years, but we're sensing it and we're feeling it. And even in church settings and church uh, spaces, there are very much worldly humanistic ideas that are being embraced and adapted into church culture. And, and so we have to be vigilant in this thing, knowing the truth, knowing the word of God, uh, believing in the supremacy of Christ, that he is the only way to the Father. He's the way, the truth, and the life. And, and we really have to get uh, in the know around the word of God and what it says about who God is, but also what it says about us as believers. Because we can be deceived about who God is, but we can also be deceived about who we are in Christ. And so it's important we look at this. So let's look at Colossians chapter 3, verses 1 through 17. And this is what Paul writes. He says, So if you've been raised with Christ, seek the things above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. For you died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you will also appear with him in glory. Therefore, someone say therefore. Therefore. Put to death what belongs to your earthly nature sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desire, and greed, which is idolatry. Because of these, God's wrath is coming upon the disobedient. And you once, you once walked in these things. 
Once upon a time, you once walked in these things when you were living in them. But now, someone say now. Now, now put away all the following. Anger, wrath, malice, slander, and filthy language from your mouth. Don't lie to each other. Since you've put off the old self with its practices, and you have put on the new self. You are being renewed. Someone say renewed. Renewed Renewed in knowledge according to the image of your creator. In Christ there is not Greek and Jew, circumcision and uncircumcision, barbarian, Scythian, slave and free, but Christ is all and in all. Let me read these final few verses. Therefore, as God's chosen ones, holy and dearly loved, put on compassion and kindness and humility and gentleness and patience, bear with one another, forgive one another if anyone has a grievance against another, just as the Lord has forgiven you. There's a preach right there for you. So you are also to forgive. Above all, put on love, which is the perfect bond of unity. And let the peace of Christ, to which you were also called in one body, rule your hearts and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell richly among you in all wisdom, teaching, and admonishing one another through psalms, hymns, spiritual songs, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. And whatever you do, in word or in deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Amen. Man, what a, what a weighty passage of scripture. I don't, let's celebrate the word of God. It's good to just read it and hear it. Faith comes by hearing the word. My faith is being built by my own voice, reading these words. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you that it brings life and understanding. Father, we pray that you'd stir our faith today, that you would increase our hope, that you would just bring a fresh joy, a fresh passion into our hearts today. We thank you, Lord, for all that you are doing in our midst. And we just give you all the praise and we come before you with grateful hearts. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hey, someone say amen with me. Can we shout it out? I need you guys to be vocal today. It's family Sunday. Let's go. And so one of the big talking points of this last season, a lot of people have talked about, especially with everything we've gone through, is this idea of the new normal. And it's been a big talking point and people talk about it and it's still kind of vague because they don't know what that actually means and what it's going to look like and, and what the experience is going to be. And, uh, but they keep hitting this idea of the new normal. And I don't know if we're in the new normal yet or if it's coming soon. I, I don't quite know where we're at in this timeline here. But this idea of the new normal has been talked about a lot. And, and I was thinking about that idea, the new normal. What's life going to be like after all of this? And, uh, and I was thinking about how in our walk with God, when we come into a relationship with God, we also enter into a new normal. The way our life used to be is radically transformed in Christ. So your normal becomes new again in Christ Jesus. But I was taking that a bit further because anything that's new ends up becoming old. Anything that you, maybe you get a new car in a few months, actually after you pull it out of the drive, that car is no longer new and it just depreciated quite a bit in value. But after a few months or years, that car is no longer your new car, it's just your normal everyday car. If you get a new house, the same thing applies. Maybe you're in a new relationship, the same thing applies. It's a new relationship, it's, exci- it's fun and exciting. And after a while, it's still fun and exciting, but it's not new anymore, it's just your normal relationship. So there's this thing about creation that when new things come along, they, they, they don't stay new. They just become normal. They become a part of your life. But I was thinking about our walk with Jesus and how I don't believe that God's called us just to have a normal walk with him. That even as we enter into a new relationship with Jesus, we enter into a new life. I believe, and this is what I want to speak to today, that God's not called us to a new normal or even just a normal. He's called us to a renewed normal. A renewed normal. Someone say renewed. 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 We're going to talk about that today. What does it mean to live a renewed normal life in Christ? I love this idea of renewed normal in When we look in this passage of scripture, there is a particular verse. I read the whole thing for context, for clarity, just it's the word of God. It's good to get it in you. But there's a specific, and they're talking about your new life in Christ, but there's a specific line here. And it says this in verse nine, it says, you have put on the new self 
and you are being renewed. So you, you've entered into an, a new life, you are a new creation, and yet at the same time, every day, progressively, you are meant to be being renewed in Christ Jesus. And, and I looked at that word in the Greek to give us a fuller understanding of, of what, it is, what it means. And the, and the Greek word for that word there, renewed, is anakinu. And here's, what it, here's an expansion of that verbiage. It says this, that this word renewed means going from one stage to a higher, more developed one. It speaks to completing a process. It means to be changed into a new kind of life. It means, I love this, to cause, to grow up new, to grow up new. And really what it means for us, it's transforming the believer. I love this, by renewing the new man. That's a mouthful. Renewing the new man. That even though you're a new creation in Christ Jesus, God's intention for you is that each and every day you are being renewed into more and more of his likeness that you are every day doesn't have to be normal with Jesus. He takes the everyday experiences you go through and takes you through a renewal process that you are becoming more and more like him. It says you're being renewed into a true knowledge of who God is and who he's made you to be. So you're being renewed. And I want to start by saying this, that renewal begins and ends in Christ. It begins with Christ. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, it says this, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creature. He is reborn and renewed by the Holy Spirit. The old things have passed away. Behold, new things have come, because spiritual awakening brings a new life. And I love that. We are new creations. We are new creations, and it begins in Christ. It also ends in Christ, because he's not only the author of our faith, he's the perfecter of our faith. And the thing, the work, it says in the scriptures, the work he began in you, he is faithful to bring it to completion. So he's there at the beginning of your decision, and he's going to be there at the end as well, because he's been working on you. He's been working on your heart. He's been working on your spirit. He's been working on who you are because he's got a plan and a purpose for your life. And he doesn't want you to just go through the routine and do the normal life. He's called you to a renewed normal where each and every day you are uh, progressively growing more and more like Jesus. And, and, And it doesn't say that we are perfect creatures. It doesn't say, behold, you are a perfect creation in Christ. It says you're a new creation. It doesn't say that when we accept Jesus that we enter into a perfect life. It says we enter into a new life, a new kind of life. And that leaves room for progress. So that the person I was when I first gave my life to Jesus is not the person I am today. That my faith has grown, that my hope has grown, that my character has grown, that in each part of my life, as I've gone through the renewal process, that Jesus is forming more of himself in me each and every day. And that means that every day can be a new day with Christ. Every day can be, we can experience new life in Christ. We made that decision in that moment, but it doesn't end there. Jesus is continuing to renew us. He's continuing to renew our spirit. He's continuing to renew the inner workings of our life. That inner man, that old self is done. When we accept Jesus, when we make a decision for Jesus, we, we become a new creation. And, and it talks about this correlation, how we are crucified with Christ. And then through the waters of baptism, that old nature That old sinful nature is buried with Christ in the waters of baptism, and we are raised with Christ into newness of life. So that whole process is so important. That's why baptism is such an important part of our life. It's not just a public declaration of our faith in Jesus. That's often the idea that's promoted around baptism. Let's go public with our faith. It's so much more than that. It's so much more than that. There is a spiritual component to baptism that we are actually lacking in life if we don't make a decision to get baptized. Because it describes it like when you, when you, when you get saved and that old sinful nature is crucified with Christ, before baptism, it's almost like you're carrying that old sinful nature around with you. 
it starts to get a little stinky because you got a dead corpse on your back. It starts to get a little, it starts to weigh you down and you wonder why, man, I feel like there's such a great tension between me, this old sinful nature and this new creation. What's going on here? And, I, and, and, and before the waters of baptism, you're carrying around that, that sinful nature. And, and, and in Christ, in the waters of baptism, that's what's spiritually happening to you in that moment is that that old man, that old creation is getting buried with Christ under the waters of baptism, gone, done. And then you're raised into newness of life in Christ Jesus. And that is the, the greatest moment. That is the greatest moment in, in, in those beginning stages of our walk with Jesus because we get to experience the fullness of that new creation reality. And that's really what I'm speaking to today. And it's a topic we could go on for a long time about. But I really wanted to emphasize that, that, that it begins in that moment. When you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you become a new creation. And then in the waters of baptism, that old sinful nature goes down and you're raised into newness of life. But it, you're not raised into this perfect life. Not, it's, it's, I think sometimes there's this false reality sometimes in Christian circles where I'm a Christian, so I have to have it all together. I can't have any issues. I, I have to say the right thing at all the times. And if I come to church, I gotta be at 100 and there can't be any issues in my life. Why? Because I'm a Christian. And, and, and we, put, we put this pressure on ourselves to, 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 it's performance. It's not faith, it's performance. But we have to come back to this, this foundation that it's, he didn't bring us into a perfect life, he brought us into a new life. And this, in this new life, he is continuing to renew us so that, yes, we are maturing. Yes, some of those old ways, those old practices that we, we were living in, those are starting to fall away and we're starting to move away from that. I'm not saying this to somehow condone sin or, or, or immaturity. What I'm saying is, though, that we've got to realize that we're all on a journey and that we're going from glory to glory to glory to glory, and that God is renewing us. And maybe you're in this place today and you just feel stale and you feel worn out and you feel, man, you just don't feel like that same passion. And, and I'm reminded of when Jesus writes to the church in Revelation, he says, you've forgotten your first love. And that first love, that, 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 that beautiful connection, relationship you have with God, God wants you to experience that every day as he's in you as he's bringing you into a fresh place of faith in him and relationship with him. Let's not forget our first love, but let's not forget that renewal begins in Christ and it ends in Christ, that he is the author and the perfecter and he's continuing to work on us so that we're growing and we're going from glory to glory. And as we continue in this passage, I want to highlight the fact that renewal deepens our relationship with God. And I wanna, I wanna look at this, this passage, Romans 12, verse two. I think it's interesting how certain verses seem to be highlighted in seasons. And I think this verse seems to be highlighted in so many church settings. And even in our church, we've, we've gone to it often because I think it's a really important verse to look at. Romans 12, verses two, it says this. Paul writes, do not be conformed to this world any longer with its superficial values and customs, but be transformed and progressively changed as you mature spiritually by the renewing of your mind. The renewing of your mind and you're focusing on godly values and ethical attitudes so that you may prove for yourselves what the will of God is, that which is good and acceptable and perfect in his plan and his purposes for you. He says that you need to be not conforming to the patterns of this world, but you need to be transformed and renewed where in your mind. It's in your mind. Our minds are such, such an important part of our walk with God. We can't negate this. And our minds have been waging war this last season. Our minds have been under such duress and pressure and stress in this last season. And, and some of the issues people have had to walk through have been all in their minds, mental battles. And, and here we see Paul saying, don't conform to the patterns of this world, but be transformed and be renewed in your mind. You need to be renewing your mind. That's a part of the renewal process. And then we look at Colossians, it says you're being renewed in true knowledge. So there's this connection between renewal and our relationship with God, knowing more about who God is, knowing more about God's purposes, God's will, God's plan, knowing more about God's values. As we learn and we know those things and we know the creator and the way he's created things, we are gonna be renewed in that process. 
But we have to spend time with God and we have to get into his word to continue that process in our lives. He wants to renew you in his word. He wants to renew you in your spirit. And you can do that by reading the word, by praying, by worshiping, by speaking in tongues and stirring up your faith inside of you. Those are practices that renew us and strengthen us and take us from one stage to a more complete stage that change us and transform us into a true knowledge of who Jesus is and who he's called us to be. And so renewal deepens our relationship with God. And then renewal gives us perspective. I think this is one of the most important parts of this whole message is that renewal gives us perspective. And, and here's what I want to read to you. This is from 2 Corinthians chapter 4. And Paul, he's talking about his apostleship. He's talking about the ministry that God's called him to. And then when he's, he's talking about the hardship and the pain that he's experiencing, like he's experiencing so much opposition. He's experiencing so much hardship. And what, it's, what he's saying in this passage is he's saying, I love it in verse 16, it says, therefore do not become discouraged, spiritless, disappointed or afraid, though our outer self is progressively wasting away, yet our inner self is being progressively renewed day by day. For our momentary light distress is producing for us an eternal weight of glory beyond all measure. I love that idea that What's happening around us doesn't have to determine what's happening in us. And I think that's something that we can grab a hold of in this, in this season, especially with everything that's going on in people's lives. I love the testimony that Cody shared about how it looked like everything was great. New job, new house, new car, everything. And yet internally there was this struggle. And so often that's the case. And Paul kind of presents us with another uh, experience where he's saying, everything is falling apart around me and I'm experiencing opposition in the flesh, yet inwardly I'm thriving. Yet inwardly I'm being renewed day by day by day. And in this particular passage, that word renewed means that I'm being given us new strength and a new vigor so that even though everything I'm experiencing, the opposition, the struggle, the hardship, yet inwardly I am growing in strength, I am growing in my faith, and I'm being renewed and becoming more like Christ Jesus and, and getting into a greater knowledge of who God is. And so I think it's important for us to grab a hold of this understanding, especially with everything that we're going through, because I think people are tired, people are weary in this season, People are worn out in this season with everything that they've experienced and the way society has been. It can be tiring. It can be hard. Um, <clears throat> and, um, and I was thinking about how, you know, my wife and I, we just had twins and you don't get as much sleep in the beginning. I think anyone with kids would know that. And, uh, and so, you know, you're putting them down to sleep and you're tired yourself and you've got them in a dark room and you've got a sound machine on. We use a sound machine. No judgment if you don't use a sound machine. And, uh, and so you've got your sound machine on blasting at like 100. And then you've got, it's like so pitch black in the room. So you're, you're trying to help your child fall asleep. But because you're so tired, you're also falling asleep. <laughs> and so I'm just, you know, you're holding the baby. You've got two there. And you're just like, man, I'm struggling to stay awake. And I was thinking about how in this season that people are already tired, but in that tiredness, they're going to dark places and they're filling their life with a lot of noise. Yep. And what's that doing to people is, is it's causing them to fall asleep. Right. And I really wanna challenge us as a church, especially in this season, not to fall asleep. I don't mean die, I, I, I mean that in your faith, that you're, you're just weary because of everything that's externally happening to you but internally it's bringing you to a place because rather than going to the source of life, rather than running to the one who can bring you a new joy, a new life, be renewing you inwardly, you are going to dark places and you are filling your life with a lot of noise. And what it's causing in you is it's causing you to fall asleep. And that's not what God has called us to. God has so much more for you. He has a new and a better way of life for you. That even though in the hardship and in the pain and in the circumstances that you might be experiencing that 
Outwardly, it feels like everything's falling apart, but inwardly, you are being renewed in your faith. You are being renewed in your strength. You are being renewed in your passion. You are being renewed in your courage. And that, that Isaiah writes that those who wait upon the Lord renew their strength. And I think that's a practice as, as a church body. I want to encourage you to lean into, to learn to wait on God, to go to that place where you can find life and find joy again in Christ alone. I was thinking about how uh, one of the things that people are really talking about more and more is renewable energy. And it's a really cool concept, the idea of taking energy from something that never really seems to run dry. The sun is gonna be with us for, you know, they say a couple billion years, we're good there. Uh, you know, the wind, it's always windy, that's great. And, and, and not, I feel like they're setting me up for a preach with this. The sun and the wind are bringing energy and life to our world. The son of God, Jesus Christ, the wind of the spirit, breathing life into our bodies. There's something about that. It's a perfect preacher analogy. But I think there's something in that for us of going to renewable sources of energy, drawing from a source that never runs dry, drawing from a source that isn't going to cause damage to everything else around it, drawing from a source that's going to bring you life and vitality every single day that you never have to worry about. Is there going to be enough for tomorrow, but that you can continue to go to? They're always there. They're always bringing energy. And that ultimately is Jesus Christ. That ultimately is the spirit of God working in you and working through you that you can be renewed day by day by day in your relationship with God, in your relationships with people, in your faith, in every aspect of your life, you can experience a renewal in Christ Jesus. And I think that's for someone today. And, and I want to end by saying this, because how does this apply to our life and why is it important for us to know today? Um, like I said, there's a lot going on in the world. And, and I think it's important to be reminded of who we are in Christ and what's available to us. That everything we experience, um, I believe God will use for good. One of my favorite Psalms is a Psalm where it says, you brought me through the fire. You allowed the horses to trample on my head. I was underwater, but you brought me through that into a place of abundance. And I really believe that God can use the circumstances in our life, our everyday life, to renew us, to strengthen us, to bring us to a greater place of faith. No matter how long this season goes with everything the way society is right now, no matter how long it goes, I believe as believers, we don't have to fall asleep, that we can stay awake, we can be alert, that we, but it's gonna require us to do a few things. Number one, it's gonna require us to go to a renewable source of energy in Jesus Christ and in our faith and the relationship with God. That can happen through reading the word of God. There are moments in my life where I think, I just need to get in the word. I can feel it in myself. I gotta go tell Kayla, I gotta get away and just refer. I mean, I just need a couple minutes. I just need an ounce. I just need a little bit of bread in my life. I love bread, but I need a little bit more of that spiritual bread and less of the natural bread. But I need to get, I need to get away because I need some energy. I need some strength in my spirit. And that's not going to come from dark places and a lot of noise. That's going to come from hearing one voice break through all of that. And it's going to come from a place full of light and full of life and vitality. And in that place, I'm going to be renewed so that today is a new day of salvation. Today is a new day of life. Today. I'm a new creation, but I'm being renewed more and more into who God's called me to be simply by put, taking time to wait on him, to be with him, to allow him to renew me, to take me from glory to glory into a new place. And in doing that in Colossians, it also tells us that there are some things we need to put away. And he uses clothes analogy. You've put on a new self. You've taken off the old self. And now you need to put away some things. He says to put away anger, to put away wrath, to put away malice, to put away slander. He says, put to death impurity, put to death lust, put to death evil desires, put to death greed. Those are things we need to put away and put to death. And then as we go to our closet of faith, we go in there and we put on, what do we put on? I want to put on compassion. 
I want to put on kindness. I want to put on humility. I want to put on gentleness. I want to put on kindness. I want to put on patience. And above all else, I want to put on love because that's what's going to put it all together. That's what's going to bring it all together. And as I do these things, I will be renewed in Christ. As I'm walking in this reality, as I'm doing these things, I am becoming more and more like Christ Jesus. And that's the goal is that we're becoming more and more like Christ Jesus. So even in this time, even in this season, even with everything that you are going through, I want to encourage you today. Number one, don't fall asleep. Stay awake. Stay alert. Be renewed in Christ Jesus. Be renewed in his word. Be renewed in his presence. Get away from the dark places. Get away from the white noise. Get away from those things that are pulling you down and pulling you into darkness, into hardship and more struggle. And put on the things that God's called you to. Embrace this new creation reality. You are a new creation in Christ. You need to live like it. You are a new creation. You've been made righteous. Live a righteous life. You've been made holy. Be holy in your interactions, in your words, and how you, uh, 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 the things you do, the things you say. You're a new creation. Put on these new clothes. Walk in them. Live it out. Embrace it. Allow God to renew your spirit each and every day so that whatever you're going through, inwardly, you can be flourishing in God. Inwardly, your strength is growing. Inwardly, your faith is growing. And whatever we have to experience as a church or in society, and the opposition and the persecution, know that God will use it to refine you, to grow you, to bring you into a place of abundance and flourishing in Him. And that's amazing. So I want us all to stand to our feet if we can. I want us to pray and I want us to wait because we have a few minutes here. Because I think that there are people in this room, even in this season, maybe you've experienced it where you feel like, I'm tired. I just want to sleep. Maybe that's you today. Like in your faith, you're like, I just, I don't think I can get in the word anymore. I don't think I have enough energy. I don't think I can get to church anymore. I just don't have it in me. I don't think I can pray. I just don't have it in me. I'm tired because I feel like I'm just under pressure and opposition day in and day out, day in and day out. Maybe that's you here today and I wanna pray for you. I want God to work in your life. I want you to begin to be renewed in your faith today. That you're strengthened in your faith today. That you're going from glory to glory, that you're coming into a new place that you're a new creation. And today's a day to experience renewal in your faith. So if we could all just close our eyes and maybe we just lift our hands or put our hands out here today just to receive from God. We wanna wait on Him. We wanna hear from Him. And maybe in your life, you know that you've been in dark places. You know that you've surrounded yourself with noise. And this is a moment to say, God, I'm done with those things. God, I'm going to run to the light. I'm going to come to the source of everlasting life. And maybe today's the day you need to repent, to turn away from those things and begin to run towards Jesus again. I want you to do that in this moment. That no one can hear you. This is between you and God, but I want you to make that decision today to make a change in your life so that you can begin to be renewed again and experience the renewal that God has for you. And maybe today you're in that place or you're just tired and you're worn out and you know it's affecting your faith. You know it's affecting your love for God. This is a moment for him to renew a passion in you. I want, I want you to leave room for that. Say, God, that's me. Come breathe afresh in my life. I take that time with God here. We're waiting on him. Those who wait on the Lord will renew their strength. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. We love you, Lord. God, we love you so much. Come and work in our lives right now. Renew us, refresh us, restore us, God. 
God, we pray that you, you're the one who makes all things new. Come and do that in our hearts today. We just pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. We'll take some time here to worship and just spend any time in his presence. Yeah. 
surrender all to you, Jesus. Said was it's not about perfection. 
It's about faith. You're, you're never going to be perfect. I've been saved for a long time. Jed says I'm perfect. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, I'm not perfect. I make mistakes all the time. But the beauty of it is I don't have to beat myself up over it because Jesus is who I look to and he's who I identify with. And the other thing Jed talked about a lot was the noise. Maybe you're here this morning and you've got a lot of noise in your life. There's a lot of things that you haven't been filtering and it's been affecting you. And you don't know which way is up. And really Jesus is the answer to that. To cut through the noise, Jesus is the answer to that. And I wanna give you an opportunity this morning. If you don't know who Jesus is, you can know him today. You can know him today. It will cut through that noise and give you a firm foundation, something to stand on. So I wanna pray a prayer. And if, if you've never come to Jesus or you've just been struggling, today is your day, okay? So I'm gonna pray a prayer. Romans 10, nine says that if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you're saved. You're in the family. You have no worries. It's not about you. It's about him. So I'm going to pray a prayer. You all can pray along with me. And, uh, and, and I just know there's somebody that wants to give their heart to Jesus today. So let's pray. Jesus, I repent of my sins for going my own way. Today, I put my faith in you. I believe that you died on a cross, you were buried in a grave, and you were raised to life. Jesus, today I put my faith in you. Come into my heart, be my Lord, be my Savior, and I choose to follow you the rest of the days of my life. Amen. If you made that decision today, we want to hear from you. So, so come see anybody on this front row on the leadership team or come and see the prayer team. So if you, if you do need prayer, uh, we have prayer team on both sides. Uh, if you want us to stand in faith with you for anything, we want to do that. So prayer team is available for you guys. Um, so, so come on up and get prayer. And guys, it's family fun day. It's family fun day. And this hot dog looks to be grilled to perfection. So I want to get you guys out there before it, they're not grilled to perfection and they get burnt. <laughs> so join me and my family and all of us as we go out here for family fun day. There's food fun and fantastic games. All right. So join me out there. Have a great day.